So how much can a food truck make in a day? So if you're trying to figure out how much money you could potentially make with your food truck business, but you're not sure of the factors that can contribute to that success, I'm actually gonna go over five specific things that no matter where you are and what you're selling, you can actually sell more through your food truck and increase your overall sales every single day. We're gonna dive into that here on Food Truck Freaks right now. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. It's Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online and our new channel here, Food Truck Freaks. We actually have a handful of food entrepreneur channels here on YouTube. You can definitely check out those links down below in the video. But in this particular video, I wanted to go over five factors that can contribute to any food truck's success, no matter where you are or how much money you plan to make every day. Did you know, by the way, the average over 60% of food trucks that responded to a recent survey said that they make over 100 to $175,000 in gross sales a year. And the top, top tier, only about 30 to 40% of them make over $200,000. That is actually gross revenue. That is not going to be profit, but that is something that's really lucrative when you start thinking about the food truck industry. If you're looking to create a food truck business, so it can be a true, extremely profitable type of business with a low amount of investment, believe it or not, you don't need to have a hundred or even $200,000 to invest in a food truck getting used food trucks and even altering them and making sure that they are fitting, retrofitting what you need to have done can cost you a lot less than that. And you don't need to invest a ton amount of money into like a restaurant or cafe, which a lot of chefs or people who enjoy cooking end up going the route of the food truck because of that very nature, because you can invest relatively minimal amount of money in comparison to a brick and mortar. I've actually owned a brick and mortar Italian bakery, and I can tell you that it was quite an expense to get up and running and keeping it going and successfully uh, profitable was something that was a huge challenge before I transitioned online. So let's dive right into it. Let's get into these five specific factors. I have a handful of notes here that I wanna cover here on the board, and I'm gonna give you some ideas of how this works. So number five, we're gonna go from five down to number one. <clears throat> Depending on the type of event that you go to, one of the most important factors when you're trying to calculate what are you gonna sell and how much, believe it or not, it's the type of food. Not every food will actually go over very, every, uh, perfectly well at every single event that you go to. So the type of food that you sell can contribute to your overall success. So type of food. Now keep in mind, you run a food truck business. And as that such, you have the ability to transition and, and alter your menu as you, as you see fit. Now, a lot of cities and counties may have certain regulations as far as submitting a menu that you have to send to the county if you're going to make changes or if there's a specific set of food, whatever that may be. But I can tell you right now that most states is very lenient on the type of food that you can make. And if that's the case and you love to cook, you need to check out the event before you go. Find out from the event organizers the previous years, how many people have actually attended. Who comes? Is this like a family event or is this something for adults? Or is this something mainly for guys or maybe is it mainly for women? Um, any type of event that's like that, you can alter your menu to kind of acclimate and make sure that you um, serve that type of food that would go over well with those types of clients or customers. So the type of food that you sell can contribute majorly to your daily sales and how much you could actually make every day out of the food truck. So if you have the ability to alter it slightly, I'd highly recommend that you do that. Um, nobody's saying that you have to revamp the entire menu. And, and of course, if you've got a menu board, you have the capacity to simply just you know, erase what it is that's there, put on something new, and then try a different type of cuisine, a different food. So be flexible with the type of food that you can make because it has a big, big, big impact on your overall sales. Number four, believe it or not, freshness. Yes, now you're probably thinking, well, Damien, that's a no brainer. Nobody sells you know, nasty old food. Well, believe it or not, Actually, I went to a recent uh, food truck event with my son and my, my wife was there as well, but we had got uh, some items that were French fries and like, chicken tenders and such. They were really greasy and the fries were like lukewarm. They weren't even that hot. Um, so the freshness does have a huge impact on it. And if you're going to serve food and you have a lot of the ingredients that are either being held at a certain temperature, make sure you try to keep it as fresh as possible. Turning it over, if you're having to add additional ingredients to the process, make sure that it's done as fresh as possible just before the customer consumes it and eats it because just like any other restaurant and you can attest to this too if you're watching this video bottom line is you go to a restaurant and the food is disgusting the service is great and the ambiance is great but the food is cold the food is, you're not going to go back there same thing applies to any type of food industry uh, business such as a food truck 
if you've got food and it's kind of lukewarm and it's the average is just kind of not fresh and it's kind of gross, next time you go to another event, those people who have actually maybe gone to your food truck before or seen it, they're not going to come back. And it happens to be that if you're at a food truck event and people are eating your food and they're telling people around them, hey, don't go to that food truck over there. The food is horrible. The fries are horrible. This and that. The chicken's gross. The rice is cold. Whatever it may be, make sure that the food is as fresh as you could possibly make it because that is only going to keep people happy because freshness has a big impact with your daily sales on a food truck. Number three. Now, this is something that was really irritating. Speed. Yes, believe it or not, one of the major things about getting food from a food truck is that you don't want to wait in line seven days just to get some food. Of course, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but we were actually at another food truck event and we were waiting in line for about 25 minutes when they sold out and we were like four or five people away from the window and they had actually sold out of all the food and then we had to wait in another line. The waiting in line for a food truck food at any event is really kind of annoying. Now, I know there is going to be a line. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a wait, but the faster you can produce whatever the product is you're making, the better off it's going to be actually for you and the customer is going to love it because they'll come back again and again. And you never know how long they're going to be at an event. If they eat at your food truck and maybe they're there for three or four hours and their kids get hungry again, but you have a fast moving, quick pace, I can make the food easily type of food truck, you're going to make way, way more money and you're going to entice more people to stand in your line for a minimal amount of time compared to the guy next to you where there's maybe about a 20 minute wait. I've actually been at food truck events where it's, the wait is after you order anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes waiting and that's ridiculous. So whatever food that you're preparing or making, make sure that there's not a lot of assembly involved in making it. Something that you could throw together quick, get on a plate or in someone's hand fast because you're going to make much, much more money, okay? Number two, of course, this is a huge factor when any family is price. Any family has three or four kids and they're at an event or even just a couple of kids and they've only got so much money budgeted for that event to go out and eat something, the price is going to have a factor to do with it. Trust me, it will. So don't overprice or outprice your food where it's like, eh, you know what, the guy over here is like five, six bucks and this guy is 10 or 12 dollars. Now, of course, your menu and what you're making is going to have a big contribution as to how much you charge. But I'll be honest with you. If you're getting in the food truck business, you don't want to be serving high-end sushi or something like that out of your food truck where you're going to price yourself out if you've got $10, $12, $15, $20 dollars for just one single meal. The more inexpensive you can make it, the more appealing it's going to be and you can turn over more plates and you obviously make more money. So keep that in mind that the price does make a big difference. Nobody's telling you to sell junk and cheap food, but try to price yourself so your margins are right. And now this is a tricky thing to do. Of course, you're saying, well, Damien, that's easier said than done. Of course, you need to find out what type of event you're going to, how much are the fees to go there, all of your daily expenses so you can understand how much money you can make with your food truck on a daily basis. That's the whole point of these five. But your price is something that's crucial along with your service and quality of food, of course. So number one, now this is going to apply before I get to it, this is going to apply for any type of food service that you have. I don't care. I've been in the food industry for quite a long time. I'm a huge foodie. My wife and I love to eat out. We've been to a lot of restaurants all over this country. I can tell you for a fact, you can have great food. You can have great ambiance. Your price is right and the food is fresh. All of these things are perfect and your food truck's ready to roll. But guess what? If you don't have customer service, no one is going to pay you anything for anything. No one's going to pay you anything. If your customer service on your food truck is hideous, I do not care if it's Gordon Ramsay that's preparing the food, but if their experience interacting with you is one that's not very uh, acclimable, let's just say, and it's not good and they don't remember a positive vibe, they're not going to come back. And I can tell you that, like I said, you can have a line a mile long, but person after person, customer after customer goes to that window and orders food and your customer service sucks. Well, people are going to definitely say something. And when you're at an event, it's even more toxic because of the fact that there are people walking around, people are talking and conversing. And if they happen to be at an event and they eat at your food truck and they say, wow, this guy's got some amazing food, but I'll tell you, those people at the window are total jerks. Those people will not go there. And that is an instantaneous, almost like instant karma, if you will, that your food truck will not make anything or potentially how much it could potentially make by having great customer service. So if you have a crew of guys or men or women or whoever you have helping you, 
and their vibe is really nearly negative and they are in a bad mood or whatever, you need to get them out of that instantly because the interaction at the window is the most critical part to having any success. The same thing with my business here on e-commerce that I've got the six e-commerce food businesses. It's how I follow up with the email that the guy says, hey, you know what, this arrived broke or this was damaged, what are you gonna do about it? I can't respond in a way that's gonna be negative. I simply say, hey, we apologize, we're gonna make it right. Whatever we need to do to keep the customer, it has nothing to do with the quality of the product, it has nothing to do with the shipping of the product, and I have to fix that instantly. And how I do it is, hey, we're gonna you know, be 100% satisfied, customer service is 100% most important thing, because your food truck is just that. It's a food truck sitting next to another food truck that's sitting next to another food truck. People have choices and they're not gonna come back to your window. Now, if you're in a community or in a local area and you realize this, you can also understand that it's a big factor when the word spreads in the community that, hey, oh, that food truck that shows up here where those guys are just jerks, they're not gonna come back to your food truck. So the number one thing that is the biggest factor when you determine how much can a food truck make in a day, it really has a lot to do with customer service and just a little bit to do with these top five, to be honest with you. So if your customer service isn't good, then you need to get yourself on track because that is something that makes it break any business, no matter what product or service you're selling. So these are five factors for you to understand how to make more money with your food truck. If you are a food truck entrepreneur and you've had these experiences or you know something, let us know down in the comments. But if you're new, let us know and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. Of course, we appreciate this is a brand new channel we're launching so we can uh, appreciate every single subscriber that hops on board.